Imagine someone sitting on the sidewalk, writing with some chalk, asking a person, two plus two equals four, right? Yep. Five times five is 25. Yep, that's right. 16 divided by four is four, right? Yep, you got it. One and a half divided by one third is 1.25. Try again, 1.5. Yep, you got it. So this is how my neighbor had taught me how to divide with fractions in the second grade. That was my way of communicating in the world, not only then, but now. Numbers are my way of connecting with people all around me. Numbers are a constant. They're also a common language that everyone knows, despite who you are. My name is Kaylee Judd, and this is my letter to the future. I am not your typical college student, and what I mean by that is that I am a returning student. After a few years, I went back to school, and I was a transfer student from Vancouver, Washington State. And I like to emphasize the word state because when I say I'm from Washington, people think I'm from D.C. I'm like, no, 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 I'm from Washington State, not D.C. I'm taking this opportunity right now to talk to you in the audience because I strongly believe that growth happens when you step out of your comfort zone. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm taking a small step out of my comfort zone. I want to share something that's really important to me and also share my experience. I told myself and those around me that I'm striving to be the person who I needed when I was growing up because I felt like I needed that person, that strong person in front of me. And if I had that, it would have changed my life. Numbers. Numbers are all around us. I'm going to be in a career that works with lots of numbers. I'm going to be an engineer. Numbers are everywhere. But numbers can also define you as a person. Numbers such as age. Ageism happens whether you're too young or too old to try something new. Numbers like GPA. Whether you have a high GPA that means you're super smart or a low GPA means you're not trying hard enough. There's athleticism. Athleticism has numbers. Numbers can show you have endurance or agility within your given sport. And deafness has numbers. My number is 79. That means I use a hearing aid. I can hear a little bit, but not too much. All of these things, all of these are numbers or examples of how numbers can define a person. And I had one number define me for a very long time, 0.67. That was my GPA when I finished my first year of college after graduating high school in 2018. That doesn't mean I was not smart enough. I graduated in the top 5% of my class. I failed because life just knocked me to my knees at the time. I was leaving an abusive relationship. I was working a full-time job. I was taking care of my mother who was sick with cancer at the time. And I was a full-time student. So I left school thinking I would never be good enough. I was only good enough to work in the kitchen the rest of my life because of those two numbers, 0.67 and 79. So that's what I did. I went into the kitchen. I started from the bottom up. I was a dishwasher. I moved up to catering supervisor at the age of 20. But I was also a leader in the kitchen. I hated it. I was on my path to an early grave. So something had to change. I left the kitchen industry and I was unsure of what to do with my life. And there was a woman by the name of Grace Hopper. She was a computer scientist. She was also part of the U.S. Navy, Rear Admiral. She served in the Navy until the age of 79. The Navy had initially rejected her because she wanted to join when she was 34. So Grace had said the most damaging phrase in language is, it's always been done that way. So Grace was a valuable member of the U.S. Navy, but she still found a way to serve with purpose, despite her number, despite her age. What she did is what I did. In the world of chaos in 2020, I went back to school. 
And there was a mindset that I had to prove to myself that I am more than just 0.67 GPA. I had to prove to myself that I knew more than what I did and to prove that I was more than that 0.67 GPA. Going through my schooling at the community college, I transferred to another community college that had a better STEM program. And on my first day of class, I sat down and I was watching the professor. And then he came up to me and he says, hey, you're going to be in my next Nerd Girls and Engineering program president. And I was like, heck no, I'm not doing that. And then I started to realize, maybe this is my opportunity to be more than just a number, than my 0.67 GPA. More than just a deaf individual, more than just a deaf student. Why don't I accept something like that? Why am I letting this number define me? So I'm just going to immerse myself. But I had no idea what I was doing. I met with lots of people and I tried to learn as much as I could on how to be a leader. And then I met one person, and it led me to a meeting with Mesa, Math, Engineering, Science Achievement Director, Delilah Paredes. She's now the Director of STEM at Shoreline Community College in Washington State, not D.C. Her and I were talking, and we were trying to figure out a couple of my passions and what I wanted to do. And I felt like, I'm not good enough. And she asked me the question that actually changed my life. And she says, why not? Why can't you? And I'm like, that simple question changed my life. Why am I allowing that number that I overcame in academics to continue to define me? I got into the position and I was already aspired to be a deaf woman in STEM. And I wanted to encourage younger generations of deaf and hard of hearing women to pursue STEM. And there was another woman who used her passions to create a legacy despite her number. Her name is Juliet Gordon Lowe. Juliet was the founder of the Girl Scouts in 1912. And here's a fact most people don't know. She was a deaf woman. She lost most of her hearing when she was 17, and then she lost the rest of it into adulthood. Juliet, despite her deafness, despite her number, pursued and created a space for girls with different backgrounds in one place who have ambitions to grow their leadership skills with reaching their full potential. Juliet's story is this, the work of today is the history of tomorrow, and we are its makers. What we do with today and how we approach today has an impact for tomorrow. No matter how big or how small it is, it's still progress that makes an impact in what you're looking for. And that's my perspective I bring as a leader. Now I know what you're all thinking, numbers. How can I say that numbers don't define us when the world literally runs on numbers? Numbers can be a matter of life or death. Numbers make an impact and guide people through the complexity of this world. How can we neglect the idea of numbers? Honestly, you're right. Numbers do define many things. Numbers are the literal thing that makes life go on, and all decisions come from numbers. However, defining a person, you can't use that number. As leaders, we are dealing with numbers on a continuous basis. It's the matter of a certain number that is limiting the person's opportunity. Because of that stigma that's attached to them, it does impact their future. I have a question. What does this future look like? This journey I've been on as a leader in the community and around my peers has been humbling. It's challenged me through many different experiences and has made me become a better person. But the last point I like to make is a matter of fact. Since I've been on this path of growth and leadership, I found myself with more and more opportunities for leadership. And on a number of occasions, people have asked me to be a leader and I kept turning them down. One person came up to me and asked, why have you been on these leadership roles for a year now? Why not? Why don't you do it? And I was like, hey, I'm tired. There's a couple of individuals that have come to me time and time again. I'm still a student who's pursuing their BS MS degree while figuring out my own life. And I turned and asked a question. Why are we not looking to our younger generations and letting them grow? I have these opportunities and I get these leadership positions. Is it because of their age? Their numbers of failures? their number or lack of experience. I wasn't that way. I was able to stumble, fall, fail, get back up again. 
and I'm in a place where I can continue to succeed. This community needs to have more than just one leader to make change happen. It takes a group of leaders to make change and growth be successful. I was invested in by my peers, in my community, and my mentors. Leaders create leaders. Now I'm investing in the next generation of leaders. Because after all of these opportunities on campus, and I don't want the new generation of leaders to crash and burn, and I want them to continue to thrive and serve with purpose. And I'm standing here with you today, knowing that if it wasn't for the people around me, you need to surround yourself with people who are better than you. That's where growth happens. If I let myself continue to be defined by the number 0.67 GPA and 79 and stop me, I would probably not be here today. I would be in an early grave. Challenge yourself. Ask yourself this. If you're a leader or you're going to be a leader in the community, remind yourself, lead with purpose and don't view that person as a number. Just like Delilah had asked me, why not? Why can't you? Thank you.